I'd just like to explain some of the things we've got here. We've got a pair of shoes with some trees in. There's no laces in them, but sometimes people to clean that type of shoe, it's a good thing often to take the laces out so they've been removed. These are a pair of brogue shoes, mm -hmm. black brogue shoes. Those are mainly called Oxford type of shoes, but this is a brogue shoe. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there's no trees in them. Mm -hmm. And of course they curl up. And so we might be able to, when we clean them, just swap those over a bit. And these are hunting boots. I'd like to explain about hunting boots because hunting boots, you can clean them obviously with a brush and polish, just the same as anything else. But you can actually, what we call bone them. And this is a bone, mm -hmm. it's a deer bone. And you can buy these things. But often when you work for people who, who kill things, kill animals, you'll always find that there's a bone around. And when I say bone a pair of shoes, I mean, without doing anything at all to it, you can actually, mm. you can actually do this. And by doing that, you actually smooth off the leather. Mm -hmm. And the more you do it, you'll find at the end, you can actually just run yeah. your hand over yeah. it and it will shine. But if you then continue to either spit and polish as well, you'll get them up like glass. As you can see, they have trees yeah. in them. And there are, the trees are in sort of three parts, so I won't take them apart now, but there's a middle section which is like this mm -hmm. one piece is a wedge, okay? And then the second piece, the back piece there just goes down into the boot, mm -hmm. but this piece is normally a separate piece with a whole yeah. foot on, it, on its own. But this particular pair, this foot is actually joined on that one piece of wood at the front. Yeah. It actually goes down and it's actually on a hinge and then it's got the foot in it. But it's just, um, they're quite a nice pair of boots. They do get, they do wrinkle, mm -hmm. but there's no way around that. You can't really do much with it, yeah. but you do need to keep them well polished. The other thing is that the polish on this side, you want to keep it quite thin, purely and simply, because as you can see, it's quite sort of um, dull. And the reason it's dull is because it's the sweat of the horse. That's generally what it is. And it runs on to the side. And it also a groom won't thank you for putting a lot of polish on mm -hmm. it because that polish also goes on the horse and it also goes on the saddle and, and it will be worn off. And yeah. then of course, the other thing that they wear with it is a pair of spurs mm -hmm. and the spurs are just fitted on. And you can see at the back there, there's a, an actual hole where you can actually thread a strap through. Mm -hmm. And also, um, on some hunting boots, there's also uh, two canvas um, two canvas pieces. You can see where they're stitched mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. And that's actually so you can get a boot puller on and pull them on to one's foot. So that's a pair of hunting boots. When they get wet, you need to be very careful when they put their foot in a jack to pull their boot off because one of the things is that although these are screwed in yeah. uh, because they get so wet I've actually known the whole heel come away from the boot so they do need to be quite careful but first of all when you get them you need to wash off the mud and never do anything in hot water and always do it in cold water if you do it in hot water it will go straight through the leather and it will take another day to dry out so you need to wash everything off always in cold mm. water. Okay, we'll remove those. Oh, you've got rid of the other one. That's okay, thank you. So let's talk about the shoes. Are we going to clean? I won't bother to clean those, but as you can see, the toes are already quite well done. Yeah. And this is because we obviously, at a previous stage, we worked on it. Now, the equipment we've got, we've got some polish, a brush, mm -hmm. you only really need one brush because yeah. most of the cleaning is not done with the brush. Mm -hmm. The brush is only for cleaning out, well, to clean out the welt of the shoe and just to probably do a little bit other to the shoe. But basically we don't use a brush. We do it all with a cloth, really. We have the polish and we have some candles and the candles is to melt the polish onto the shoes. That's what we're going to do, okay. Now I don't really like that shoe like that and if I, if these trees don't actually fit fit the shoe what i will do we'll put some dusters or something inside the shoe that you never know 
Oh, they will fit. So that's that's a bit better to put okay. to put that in there. And as you can see, immediately, if these shoes were kept with the trees in, they'd be a jolly. Well, yeah, you, you know, that's a good yeah. that's a good impression between mm -hmm. one and the mm -hmm. other, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, put put these trees into this pair of shoes, and as I've already explained to you, that that one is so much different, mm. and you can see that that yeah. is so much creased up, purely so because people need to keep trees in their shoes all the time mm -hmm. and also when they travel don't ever ever take them out to travel and yeah. you know always need to keep the trees in. So the very first thing that I would do would make sure first of all that all the dust and dirt was off the pair of shoes mm -hmm. right. Now I don't expect people to to clean the bottom of the shoe but this little part here you can actually put some polish on there. Yeah. You can put it on with a brush. I occasionally would probably put it on with a duster. Okay. And I just pick up a bit of polish and I sort of just curl it around a little bit mm -hmm. so that it looks like it's been done a, a little bit more professionally than just drawn on there. Okay. Right. okay. So you've got something just looking a little bit more black there. Okay, and you can do, whilst you're doing it, you can just do the other side, okay? So I just hold my finger, my hand, onto the onto the heel mm -hmm. and make something as if it was done with a compass, you know, yeah, you sort of yeah. just go like that, just like that. And then fill that part in there, okay? You can leave that. Then get the brush. Once all, the, as I say, all the dirt's off, and this is called the weld in mm -hmm. there, okay? Mm -hmm. And just get the brush and go right the way around it, like so, okay? And then do the other one. You, it's a good idea to keep both shoes going together. It's only when you start really to polish it mm -hmm. that you concentrate mainly on one, okay? So we've really finished with the brush now. I wouldn't use probably the brush ever again okay. because now I will put some polish on the heel, okay? like that mm. and just on the outside of that well just go all the way around it and that's okay and you can't do this you can't do this with being perfectly clean you need a lot of um, sort of untidy material yeah, around yeah. you because it's it's going to be polished you don't want um, a good tablecloth or anything like mm. that you, you just need a few old dusters, old rags yeah. that you can use, and then you don't feel uncomfortable about the way you're, you're doing this, you know, because mm -hmm. the polish is going to mark. I mean, yeah. you can see already there's bits yeah. of polish on there, so it just shows you. Right, so once that's done, it's just a matter now of start doing the shoe. Now, you need to put polish all over the shoe, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're calling it the spitting polish. In other words, I'm actually going to spit on the shoe and I don't have what I call a tin of water because one of the things that you need, you need hot water or warm water and the warmest water is in your mouth. So I just, and I don't mean spitting nastily, I mean just spitting what's in your mouth, okay? So I put some polish on the shoe all the way around so that the whole shoe has been covered with the polish. Mm -hmm. Now you'll probably notice that I'm doing it all in little circles. Yeah. I'm not, I never ever mm -hmm. polish like that with straight lines. It's always, all the time, just done it in little circles, okay? okay? Right now, once that's done and the polish is on the shoes, then I'll spit for the first time, <laughs> okay? okay? And that's it. And that should be enough to probably drag over the shoe just to start it off, okay? Okay. And I'll do just that little bit of dampness mm -hmm. and it just holds the polish onto the shoe. Right. Now when I finish that, the next thing I do, I'm going to burn, burn the shoe. And I don't mean set fire to the shoe, but what I mean to say is to warm the shoe. And I do it with a candle mm. and I hold 
the shoe, as you can see, in the flame very quickly. yes. but you must keep moving the shoe. you've got to keep moving the shoe it's no good it's no good just leaving it in there because you would be burning the leather. right. and that's what i'm not doing. all i'm doing is warming up the polish that i've already put on there. okay. now once i've done that i put some more polish on okay. now i'm not going to spend my time cleaning the whole of the shoe because that's going to take me probably uh something like about half an hour mm. on one shoe okay. and we're not going to spend that amount of time on it so i'll concentrate mainly on the toes okay both shoes so i just put the polish on again run the toe over the shoe in the candle and burn it on again okay, okay. once that's on put some more on and probably um if the shoes are not too bad and these seem reasonably clean uh, probably with about four goes of polish and burning mm. you'll probably find that there's a complete difference in the shine of the mm. shoe okay so we just continue to do that and then just leave it for a second and then do it once again okay so more polish and you notice when i put it in the polish i only yeah, just take yeah, just very thing, very little yeah, yeah. You don't dig it in deep. Mm. When you're cleaning hunting boots, sometimes you find that you do need to pick up a little bit more mm. polish because obviously there's an awful lot of leather there. And when people go out hunting and, and riding with long riding boots on, but not particularly hunting, but any type of riding up mm -hmm. with a horse, you'll find that their boots get quite dirty, and especially out in the rain, and they'll yeah. come back and they'll look like they've never had any polish on at all. But as soon as you as soon as you start you'll find that that's it okay so we've done that four times mm. okay mm. now to bring that back up again this is the second time you spit and then this time you should have quite a good finish to the shoe okay and you'll probably see that the shoe as a jolly sight cleaner, we'll match it up. Well, we, mm -hmm. we won't be able to match it perhaps. But. And you just keep going for a while, okay? Mm -hmm. If it looks at all smeary like this one does, mm -hmm. then you can just do it again. Put a bit more, tiny little mm -hmm. drop of polish on and put it on the burn again because it probably might not quite be going to make mm -hmm. the good finish that mm -hmm. you're looking for, okay? Then I'll rub that in just to take that polish off. You'll probably see now what the difference yeah, was between yeah. one and the other. This yeah. one is really, really so shiny. much shinier. Mm. 